Hey there, it's Bob Jenkins with a quick video taking a little break from the general work that I'm doing today because Dan Morris, a good friend of mine, has posted this question up on Facebook and I thought that I would give an answer uh, via video and I've already answered this particular question uh, towards the bottom of this comment thread uh, but why not make a video too? Um, now I'm recording this video in a house that has other people in it, has a dog, so if you hear any other initial noises or anything like that that might be distracting, I do apologize, but just wanted to make this uh, real quick for you so you can learn just a few tricks with Microsoft Excel. Uh, so his question is, uh, Dan's question is, if my sales in month one are a certain amount and month two they're another amount, what percentage growth did I see? And uh, what equation do I need to plug into Excel? So uh, you can see the answers that he's received, and, and my answer uh, it has been posted with a specific formula that can be used in a particular cell, but I just want to show you what that looks like in Excel itself. So I'm going to share with you a couple of tricks too. Now I'm recording this video in July, uh, so I'm going to start in B3 with the name of the month, and I'm going to have, uh, going down the left side, the columns uh, or the rows will be explained with what the actual amounts are, okay? So I'll just put in sales, because that's what he initially asked for. And I'm gonna do monthly growth as the next column, or the next row. And then I'm gonna do total growth, because I wanna compare uh, the growth from a baseline, which is July, as the months go on. Okay, now trick number one, you can see now that this column A has total growth uh, and it's spilling into B6. Uh, so to make this column as wide as it needs to be, you come up to where your arrows are double headed, you double click on the column and the width of that column automatically adjusts. Okay, trick number two is I don't want to spend the time typing in August, September, October, etc. So if I simply click on the name of the month and go to the bottom right corner to my a mouse turns into a plus, I can drag and Excel very smartly turns it into each successive month. And with all of the columns highlighted, I'm going to double click on one of the months and that will make every month's columns as wide as it needs to be. But if I want the columns to be an equal width, then I can simply shift one of the columns over instead of double clicking and all of the columns will now have the same exact width. Okay, so I'm going to go to my longest month, which is November, and I'm going to shrink it to right about there, and everything is good. I'm also going to center the columns by hitting the center key for alignment. All right, so now we're going to get into some of the formulas and information uh, to tell Excel what it needs to calculate. And again, in the original question, Dan was sharing a couple of, of values of, of revenue of sales and comparing that for a percentage. Okay, so let's take this 16,170 and let's put that in for July. And then let's compare that to 16,411, which is, again, hypothetically, what he's got going on for the next month. Now his months obviously could be different than what I've got going on here, but uh, for our example, that's what we're gonna run with. Now, first of all, you're gonna notice that these are just numbers, they're not values of currency. So I wanna highlight the sales row for all months and click on the general tab and turn it into a currency, okay? I could also click on this dollar sign um, and we can take uh, decimals over or de decimals less than so that we have whole numbers, that's up to you, just using those buttons here in Excel. And let's just extrapolate a little bit more and say that he's going to go uh, to 16,700. Uh, let's go to 17,600. Let's go down to 15,350. Let's go back up to 16,430. Let's have a great month at 23,457. And then let's drop back down, 2543. 20, and we'll just fill in a couple of other numbers here, uh, sort of randomly. So we'll go with 23462, and then 21532, then 26893. And then next June, let's go with 23450. 
9. Okay, so with the numbers in place, we can now start working with the formula. So again, going from month to month, we want to compare what the percentage of growth is. So in order to do that, we're not going to have a comparable month from July to June. We'll just leave that blank. But for August, what we need to do is we need to compare this number to this number and see what kind of a percentage it is as growth. So you're going to take a formula. and In Excel, you simply start a formula with the equal sign. And in this case, we want to take this cell uh, and subtract it from the top, from the bigger number. So we've got C4 minus B4. Now that'll just give us the total difference. So in this case, it's 241. And we're going to need to adjust that formula by dividing it by the original number. And in Excel, in order to make sure you have your order of operations correct, if you remember back to fifth grade math, you've got to put parentheses around the things you want to do uh, in the right order. Remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, uh, the parentheses is always first. Uh, and then the division is going to be by B4. That's going to give us a number which is going to, uh, in this case, come out initially at zero dollars, which doesn't make sense because it's not supposed to be a currency. It's actually supposed to be a percentage. Uh, so we're going to come down and just click on percentage there. Okay, so we've got that as 1.49%. Now, you'll notice that in the uh, comments area, I had said that if you want the percentage, you can do times 100, and that'll give you a percentage value but if you actually make this into a percentage as the type of number it is, it'll automatically convert it into that. Um, if you otherwise just have it as a number, it'll just be as 0 .00, 0 .001 or whatever, so you would have to put in the asterisk times 100 in order to get a percentage value. But because Excel has that currency and then the percentage, I just went ahead and clicked that and that'll make it with a little percent sign and everything else and all is groovy. Okay, now trick number two, trick number three, I guess we're up to now is uh, well, I guess that the the formula itself was trick number three. Uh, so trick number four is uh, how can we make it easy so that we don't have to type in the formula for each successive month? And all we have to do is copy this cell and highlight all the way across and paste, and that will automatically make each cell's formula correspond to the month above it and comparing the previous month. So notice it's changing the letters uh, up one in the alphabet. Okay, So that's your monthly growth. And as you can see, some months, if this were to be Dan's growth process, he's having you know 1%, 5%, uh, but some months he's going down, uh, so negative 12%. So this is going to show you both positive and negative growth from month to month. And then finally, I remember I said that uh, you know let's take a look at the total growth. So we're going to compare the original value of uh, where we started, the 16,170, to the current month. So in Excel, the way that you want to do that is you want to take your original cell and you want to duplicate it into your total growth, but you have to make the pasting job a little bit easier uh, because otherwise Excel just keeps on shifting from one cell to the next. So if we simply hit copy and hit paste, uh, we're going to have a problem because uh, it's comparing the cell right above it to the, to the cell above and to the left. So what we have to do is we have to reconfigure the formula. So again, we're dealing with C4 to start with and B4. And then B4 is the divider. So we've got our percentage. But we want to make everything compare back to B4, not to the next column. So the way that you do that is you add a dollar sign in front of the B and the 4. And in case you want to know the snazziness about this, what this is doing is it's locking in place both the column and the row of this formula. So when we copy and then paste the same way we did before, all of the values will have B4 as its comparable variable, okay? Uh, instead of the other way around. So sometimes you're going to want to lock your column and not your row. Sometimes you want to rock your row and not your column. Uh, so you're going to use your dollar sign in front of whichever one you need to, to lock in place as you compare numbers. Okay, So that might have been a little bit over the edge for you. I don't know, but uh, it's a sneaky way uh, to make a quick Excel spreadsheet to calculate 
uh, the kind of numbers that you're looking for. So in this case, if Dan was uh, looking at his comparing, uh, he was comparing his revenue from July uh, all the way through till next year, this is the kind of numbers that he's seeing. Okay, and of course, there's more ways to, to manipulate and play with those numbers uh, to see what uh, what he's going for. Uh, you can annualize this by multiplying each of these numbers by 12. Um, you can total up the revenue from this year to last year and see the annual growth, etc. But uh, that's the basic way of working with Excel formulas to see monthly growth uh, over uh, from one month to the next. Uh, now the last trick I'll show you, I guess this is trick number five, is uh, simply if you want to make this a little easier to see, you can click on all of the cells choose your all borders. Uh, you can highlight your months and change their cell color so it's a little bit easier to see. And uh, if you want to, you can even uh, you know color in the cells for the different growth. Um, now maybe in a future lesson I'll show you how to make these uh, you know the, the cells different colors based on what the values are, but I think you've had enough for today. So I'll leave you with that. And again, this has been Bob Jenkins with BobTheTeacher.com um, with a quick random lesson about how to use Excel. Uh, but one of the things I love to do is take complex things and make them simple. Uh, and I can do that for you as well with your marketing online. So if I can help you uh, improve your business results, please come over to IamSuccessLibrary.com and uh, check out some other cool stuff I can, I can teach you with. Take care.